Hello fellow ham ranger enthusiasts and welcome. Now, what have we got here? What we've got here is a ladder line fed doublet. 66 feet long, 20 meters. So let's see what we can do with it. Portable today with G5TM. Hi there. Now recently I tried a doublet antenna for portable operating to get me on several bands. Uh, a doublet is a centre fed dipole, uh, any particular length, uh, fed in the middle with ladder line or window line and needs a tuner and that way you'll get on several bands. We will cover uh, how I built the antenna, how I deployed it, how well it operated and finally some of the challenges I had to overcome when I had to tune it. So here's the layout of the antenna itself. As you can see, it is uh, 66 feet long. At each leg is about 10 meters long, so 20 meters in total. That's a half wave, of course, on 40 meters. Uh, the end of each leg was about five and a half meters, 18 feet above the ground, and the apex was about 10 and a half meters, something like about 35 feet above the ground. As you can see there as well, uh, the antenna itself was fed with about uh, nine and a half meters. That's getting for about uh, 31 and a half feet or so of uh, 450 ohm ladder line. Just some I had uh, lying around. And then uh, to, find, to finish the, uh, the circuit, if you like, uh, the ladder line was terminated into a one to one current ballon. Uh, which in turn then was uh, plugged into that. The other end of that was about six feet of coax, which goes from the ballon to the tuner, and then from the tuner into the coupler, which is connected to the rig. Some of the key ingredients I uh, used, we had a uh, normal wire. This is sort of two, uh, two core electric wire I had uh, lying around and uh, split it up into the brown and the blue there. So that was all good. Uh, we then used, I say, the nine and a half meters of ladder line I had lying around as well. And also uh, the actual dipole center itself. This is something you can get from a place in the UK called Ham Goodies. Uh, this is like a pre-made one that you can buy, which you can use either for a doublet or for a dipole. Uh, what I also used was some crab line. Now, this is very, very cheap stuff. I uh, picked this up for like a pound. And this is a crab line you can use to uh, fish for crabs, I guess. Uh, it's about 13 metres. That's about 40 odd feet you get. And you could just, just uh, disattach the little weight that comes with it and the hook and everything else. And what you've got there is a surprisingly strong and very lightweight uh, thing that you can use to tie off your, your dipole or whatever it is you're using. I love using this stuff. It really, really is very, very tough and very lightweight to use. It also comes with a wire winder as well. So that was very handy to keep uh, everything in order. The heavy duty stuff I used, I used a 12.4 meter DX commander pole and it was fully extended, but I had the dipole at about the 10 and a half meter point from the ground. I also used a drive on support as well, uh, which can be used to secure your masts too for portable use or main masts. Uh, again, I'll try and put a link to their stuff too. Then the ladder line came down to a one to one current ballon. That was on ballon designs. And then finally, from there, uh, the coax into the chameleon uh, remote tuner that I have and uh, that could be coax fed as well as long wire so that's very useful and that then goes into the coupler that's the bias T basically that squirts the squirts even the DX up the coax to make the the tuner work so that's all the ingredients of the setup now let's see about how I deployed it in the field so we're trying to put the antenna up then I'm just going to show you the process so far what we've done and what we're trying to achieve so I'm only going up about uh, four meters or so at the moment we've got two wires 33 feet there, about 10 meters, the same that side, and uh, that's going to go down over there somewhere. And uh, this one is going to go down over there. You can see the post there, little post, little electric fence post. We'll probably put it over there. Okay, so we've got the antenna up, that's the apex, about 10 and a half meters from the ground, 35 feet. That end's going down there. That's the other side, excuse the sun, going down to there. It's an electric fence post, they're really useful. Um, and actually it goes into the center of the winder. <laughs> I mean, I may have damaged the winder. It's only a cheapy thing anyway, that the crab line was on. You can see the crab line's attached. It runs up, fairly taut, up, up and up and up, all the way to, hopefully you can see this. Yes, there we go. The little black uh, blob in the middle of the screen is an insulator. And then after that is the wire that goes up. That's, the six, that's 12, 33 feet, 20 meters of wire there. And we're doing the same over that side. So you can see the uh, ballon I'm using. Just get round. Very 
camera but it's Ballon Designs nice chunk get one to one current Ballon originally I just used this length of coax here SL7 about a meter of it and I found a good match on 40 and 17 the rest of the band struggled to find a decent match um, luckily what I did manage to do was to add an RG58 sorry about the dodgy camera but RG58 put a power connector another couple of feet about a meter of RG58 into the tuner here on the ballon and that's basically transformed the impedances down but we've now got a good match on all bands that's what we want and of course that is the uh, that's going from the uh, the tuner into the uh, the coupler and that goes into the radio so there we go so let's look at each of the bands in turn first of all 40 meters uh, the antenna gives you a nice big bubble of rf going up as a low dipole would which is what this antenna is and it performed well fantastically well 107 contacts in 86 minutes tells its own story uh, calling cq in a couple of different frequencies and uh, let's have a quick look at how well it did you are five by nine plus twenty dB. You're you're similar five nine plus five to ten. You ten dB over your tune. Good luck. Yeah, fifty nine plus twenty for you. That's in. Boom will be a five nine plus ten. No problem. Enjoy. Yeah, you're booming also five and nine plus. That's in twenty over here today. You're a lovely five nine. You're also fifty nine plus with me. Two five nine this way as well. You're a good five and nine plus ten with me. Yeah, you're five and nine plus over. Roger, yeah, you're five nine plus ten here, mate. Uh, your signal here. Yeah, you're plus 20. Yeah, 20 over chip, good signal. You're doing a fine job, man. Next 20 meters. Now, on 20 meters, this antenna is a full wavelength long, so we have two main lobes. And the antenna performed okay. It's not going to be massively strong um, as an omnidirectional antenna. It is uh, gives you a bit more gain, sort of broadside, a bit like a traditional dipole, but it's not quite high enough for that to be a particularly strong lobe broadside. Um, the antenna performed pretty well. Last week we had very similar conditions. So many, it was really around Europe, but these uh, signals I put out there were pretty strong. Excellent team. You're 15 over 9. Beautiful copy, my congratulations. You are 5 9, a very nice signal here in the southwestern part of Finland. Uh, you were 5 and 9 plus 10 into central Sweden. Also made some contacts on 15 meters on a very quiet band. We can see on 15, but the height we've deployed it at and the length of the antenna, we've got some quite uh, nice lobes there. Uh, basically, we've got six main lobes on 15 meters. The antenna itself is is around uh, 3 dB, a uh, dBi stronger than, say, a, uh, a traditional sort of ground-mounted quarter wave would be. So it's quite a nice antenna up on 15 meters. Tango 5, Tango Mexico, you have 59. And finally, 10 meters. Now, this antenna on 10 meters is now uh, 2 full wavelengths long and uh, we can see again we've now got four main lobes on 10 meters and uh, again a nice QSO there on a very very quiet band uh, see if you can spot which one I mean Roger Roger thank you for five and five you're five and one so Columbia not too bad at all just over 5,000 miles again Bands are really quiet uh, on, on the higher bands, certainly 20 and above. Pretty quiet last Friday when I when I used the antenna. Uh, some nice gain again on 10 metres and Columbia. That's not a bad catch. Now, I didn't use 12 and 17 metres because there was nothing happening on those bands at all. Both bands were pretty dead. Uh, even 10 and 15 were very quiet. But uh, the star of the show undoubtedly was 40 metres. It's a dipole at a decent height. I think personally, and this is only a gut feeling, it was probably even stronger on 40 than the half square I put up. I'll put a link somewhere on the on the, on the screen for you. I used a half square, an NFED half square, a couple of weeks, a week, a week previous to this. It performed brilliantly on 40. Now, the ends of that antenna uh, were basically about a metre above the ground. This, the, uh, the, the ends of the antenna were about five and a half metres above the ground. I'm pretty sure the ground losses would have been a bit less with this antenna. Uh, so it performed fantastically well on 40 metres and uh, I was very pleased with this performance. And I dare say when the higher bands open up again, when the sun stops its uh, sort of a tendency to do a lot of burping as it's done lately, then I'm pretty sure it'll do well on those uh, higher bands too. I think especially above 20 metres. So why do we originally have a problem with tuning 
on some of the bands? Well, the biggest reason was that when you have a doublet like this, which is um, a half wave on say 40 meters, it then becomes a full wave on 20 and uh, two wavelengths long on 10. Now, when you have that situation, when you sent when you sent to feed a doublet like this, suddenly you run the risk of having quite high impedances. And the added complication was I used nine and a half meters of 450 ohm only because that was the length I had around to use. It's purely that. Um, it wasn't a deliberate measurement. Now, the, the only problem was when you have nine and a half meters of that, and when you then have uh, an antenna, which is uh, at least one, if you take one of the legs of the, of the doublet, that was also about 10 meters long. You begin to see the problem. On 20 meters, therefore, if you add those two lengths up together, they're about 20 meters long. So you're replicating a full wavelength. But when you take one leg of the, of the doublet and you just look at the length of the ladder line, effectively what you have there is a full wavelength on a particular frequency. So on 20 meters, that high impedance would likely be replicated when the lad line comes down to the bottom, when it gets down to the balance. That length of air cell 7 didn't transform the impedance down enough for the tuner to be able to find a match. And to be fair, the chameleon tuner can go up to about 1500 ohms. So clearly the impedance was still too high. Same on 10 meters, because that was then two wavelengths. So on again, you've got high impedances, so 10 meters was also a difficult match. Now, in that situation, you've got you've got different options. Now, when you're out in the field and you've got a lot of time, you've got to think of the quickest solution. And the quickest solution was to add another length of coax after the air cell 7. Now, I had another one meter length of coax. It was RG58. That's all I had. I barrel connected it together. And then once that plugged into the tuner, suddenly the impedances got transformed enough on those bands. They were low enough for the tuner to be able to cope with them. And I managed to tune every single band at 1.5 to 1 or less. In fact, most bands were flat. It was only 12 meters. It was about 1.5 to 1. But that was absolutely fine. That's probably the least desirable way of doing it because you're introducing more loss with that coax. That run between the ballon and the tuner is the weakest part of this system. With doublets, you can also feed the ladder line directly into a band's tuner, which is probably the best way of doing it because ladder line has really low loss. SWR is not a big enemy of ladder line to a degree. We'll cover that again in the future. So that was all right. We could, I did it that way. The other thing I could have done, I could have brought out only a four to one current balance, which would have transformed the impedances before the coax and before it got to the tuner. That could have worked in retrospect, maybe, maybe not. Could have tried that. The other thing you can do, you could add another length, a bit of length to the ladder line. So I could have made that ladder line longer than nine and a half meters. It could have been 10 and a half, 11 meters. I've modeled that and the impedance would have come right down. So that could have been done. But again, I didn't have any, any extra ladder line with me, so I couldn't do that. And of course, the other thing you could do is change the length of the antennas. You can make the legs longer or shorter. But that would have involved probably a lot of tuning, a lot of faffing about. And I was, in, I was out portable. I didn't have time. So the quickest solution for me would be to elongate the length of coax. And that, would, that meant I've calculated that my overall feed line loss on 20 and 10 was about nearly 2 dB. Not a deal breaker. But clearly, some of the other methods I could have used could have changed impedances in other ways that would have led to less loss. But there we are. You've got to make these decisions when you're out in the field. You've got to do it when you can. You do what you can. And we still had a lot of fun using these different bands with this particular antenna. So it's all good. So do you use doublets at home or portable? Have done in the past, currently do. Either way, let me know your thoughts and comments below. I'd like to hear what you think about the multiband doublet. Personally, I think it's one of the least used and best options you can have there for multiband operation. Take care. We'll catch you again on another one. 7-3 for now.